Can you tell the difference? They appear the same, but sound money rings true. By contrast, the other sounds empty, dead, simply untrue. Sound money has intrinsic value, meaning its financial and physical value are the same. The financial and physical value of other money doesn't match up at all. That kind of money's value is enforced by legal tender laws, by governmental fiat. Governments simply diluted each coin's precious metal content by mixing in cheap base metals. Sadly, now at the beginning of the 21st century, goods cost 25 to 30 times more in dollars than they did 100 years ago. Their price in gold hasn't changed a bit. So what's happened to our dollar? Is it sound money? Why has it lost so much purchasing power in such a relatively short period of time? Today's headlines scream warnings about the current economic crisis, both in the U.S. and around the world. Our situation is much worse than most people realize. How did we get to this point? The answer is twofold. First, the U.S. dollar's loss of more than 95% of its purchasing power over the last 100 years. And second, the greed, power lust, and incompetence that caused that loss. I suppose we can take some consolation from Henry Ford, who said, It's well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. So, here we stand atop a mountain of debased and crumbling currency. Aroused from our stupor, we find ourselves teetering at the edge of a financial precipice made all the more precarious by a president who in the first eight months of office created more new money than all his predecessors combined. So what's down there at the bottom of the abyss? The numerous historical examples of destructive monetary policies based on unsound fiat legal tender share many troubling consequences. Alternating rampant inflation and deflation, heavy taxation, unemployment, civil unrest, rioting, revolution, governmental coups, and war. So where do we stand today? On November 3rd, 2010, Fed Chair Ben Bernanke unveiled a plan to frantically pile more and more dollars on the crumbling cliff edge. The Fed plans to crank up printing presses and pump 600 billion more dollars into the economy over the next 18 months. This on top of the 2.3 trillion brand new dollars created since 2008, with no visible effect on our languishing economy. All of this in an effort to create yet another bubble that will simply pop down the road, creating more misery and financial woes for the American people. Given these kinds of solutions, the worst is certainly yet to come. So today, we're essentially in free fall, having gone over the financial cliff created by the Fed's frenzied production of fiat currency. Utter ruin is looming before us. We must take quick, evasive action to avoid complete disaster. We're in economic crisis. Home foreclosures, job losses, shrinking purchasing power, and accelerating inflation is only just beginning. Who is to blame? It's our fault. We, the people, have been asleep. We allowed our elected officials to compromise their oaths of office to protect and defend the provisions of the Constitution. Fortunately, our founding fathers equipped each state in the Union with a golden parachute, perfectly suited for such a time as this. We still have a chance to pull it out, put it on, pull the ripcord, deploy the chute, and float down for a gentle and safe landing. Our parachute is securely stored with the United States Constitution. Remember, there is no historical precedent for a legal tender fiat currency ever lasting more than a few decades. All fiat monetary systems have collapsed. Every single one. As students of history, the founders understood this. They determined to give our nation a firm foundation by making the principle of sound money the supreme constitutional law of the land. Jefferson warned us that paper is liable to be abused, has been, is, and forever will be abused 
in every country in which it is permitted. He predicted with stunning accuracy, if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issuance of their currencies, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all their prosperity until their children will wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Time is short, very short. Signs that we're entering the final stages before hyperinflation and economic implosion are everywhere. The success of fiat money has always been short-lived because invariably, its abuse proves too great a temptation for those entrusted with protecting it. Long-term freedom and price stability is possible only when sound money circulates freely without government interference. Really, left to its own devices, Gold is the ultimate barometer of public confidence in government, and the ultimate means for ordinary citizens to opt out of an oppressive, fraudulent system. As Americans, Utahns need to reclaim that sound money option for themselves. But how? Let's make a brief stop in Switzerland to look for answers. Switzerland epitomizes peace, prosperity, privacy, and security. Commerce flourishes. The country enjoys the inflation-proof Swiss franc, backed by gold until just recently. A strong competing local currency also circulates freely within the country as a valuable support to local industry and commerce. Swiss discretion, honesty, and security have made its banking industry renowned the world over. Fully one-third of all funds held outside the country of origin, estimated to exceed $6 trillion in 2007, have been committed to Swiss banks for safekeeping. The Swiss model for peace and prosperity, a sovereign state having sound money and a competing currency to support the local economy with the reputation for strict privacy and for the protection of property rights secured through an armed trained citizenry, thus attracting foreign investment and deposits. The Swiss model looks good. Could it be constitutionally implemented in the state of Utah? Like Switzerland, Utah is well-renowned for its spectacular countryside. Settled in 1847 by rugged, hard-working pioneers in search of religious, political, and economic freedom, the Utah deserts have blossomed as a rose into beautiful and prosperous communities. Owing to the legacy of their pioneer heritage, Utahns are generally regarded as honest, hard-working, religious, and family-oriented people. Utah contains plentiful mineral resources, including gold and silver deposits. Favorable commercial and banking laws tend to attract business and industry to the state. The Utah Constitution contains broad and explicit declarations regarding the people's inalienable personal and property rights. In light of the dire economic circumstances facing both the United States and the world as a whole, a comprehensive bill is slated for consideration this legislative session by our elected representatives. It's designed to fully implement the Swiss model in Utah as our state's golden parachute. If we were to adopt sound money as a widely circulated local currency, Utah would be well positioned to weather any of the financial storms that may arise. Throughout history, wherever people have embraced sound money, prosperity has followed. So contact your Utah state representative and senator. Let them know that it's time for Utah to pull the ripcord on the golden parachute the framers carefully prepared for us. Let's make Utah a sovereign state, having sound money and a competing currency to support the local economy with a reputation for strict privacy and for the protection of property rights secured through an armed trained citizenry, thus attracting foreign investment and deposits. Because the Founding Fathers knew by their own experience the dangers of unbacked fiat money, they packed our golden parachute with great care. They provided in Article 1, Section 8 for Congress to regulate commerce between states, not within them. In Section 10 of Article 1, they made sure that no state would make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Also in the Bill of Rights, they reminded us that powers not delegated to the United States nor prohibited to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. The Utah Sound Money Act is being circulated to your elected official for their review and support. 
your Utah State Senator and Utah House Representative need to know you support this bill. Utah friends, please beware. Powerful moneyed interests and their allies at the highest levels of government will always oppose sound money. But do you really want to trust your family's lives to a parachute pack by the same people who pushed you off the cliff in the first place? The chance for Utah to pull the ripcord on its own golden parachute is brief. The longer we delay, the more catastrophic our landing will be. Don't look to Washington to save the day. We must choose to save ourselves. Pull the ripcord, now. Call your legislators today and tell them to pass the Utah Sound Money Act so Utah can pull the ripcord and float to safety. The www.utahsoundmoney.org website provides easy help to find your elected officials' contact information. Here you can also learn more about the bill and the constitutional basis for its success. Sound money rings true. Thank you.